it's time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. Um, originally, we was going to take you to New York today and Ground Zero in Washington, D.C. and the Pentagon. But then last weekend, there was a marvelous band in, um, at the Lucky Eagle Casino um, uh, with the Chehalis tribes, and they were called Destiny's Child. So we went there on Friday night, and we disco danced all night. And then we went there on Saturday night and disco danced all night. And so even though I put on my hiking boots today, uh, I decided, you know what, I'm still tired from the weekend. So how about we just let CK take us to a place called Zugspitze. And the Zugspitze is the highest mountain in Germany. And so without any delay, uh, I think, here's my boots, you see here, I was all ready and then changed my mind, just like a woman. And um, so we're gonna go to the Zugspitze with Claudia. Um, and of course, I'm gonna talk right through there because ever once in a while, uh, you know, she, um, she has trouble with a word, and however, she's going to be here next week, and then we can ask her uh, about some of the adventures she has taken. Now, keep in mind, she went there in May, and so there should have actually been a lot more snow there than it was, especially in the glacier area, but uh, that's what she brought us, and that's what we're going to show you, and uh, for, for the soldiers that were stationed in Garmisch Partenkirchen, that I, I don't know if I said this right, but that might bring back some memories for you, um, because I'm sure at one time or another, most of the American uh, uh, soldiers that were stationed in Europe uh, went to that big mountain. In mountain seems to be a, the thing right now, uh, because Mount St. Helens and everything. And so whenever she gets her boots on, her and Dita, and and. We just climb that mountain, if we can, and uh, I guess we're ready to go. So let me talk you through it there, and and off we go. I think they left early in the morning to accomplish that yes, task. Right. So, yes, one big I can't hear her at all. She must be sleepy or something. I'm not sure, but I think that's part of garbage. Look at that. Yeah. Pretty houses. That look so beautiful today morning. That house, wow. So beautiful. It's going up the hill, that's what it is. Yeah. They don't have a speed limit like we do. So. That is a map, and I go up there now. Zugspitze, 2,962 meters high. I don't know how many feet that is. And I drive that way. Oh, I'm here now. 
and goes up like there. So. Doesn't that would be a lift? She has such a neck for climbing in the things and taking us to high places. Coming down already. I don't know if I'd be bold enough to do that. I can't tell you what all those little villages are because I really don't know. To remind you, I'm in the studio, so I didn't go myself. CK is taking you. It's awfully close to that rock there. But she usually walks like 20, 30 minutes just to get to an elevation, so I think that was the smart thing to do. Wow. They are clouds. Coming home one time, we drove through clouds by Mount Hood. Kind of strange to be on top of them like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
So far, so good. Got the glacier. Yeah. Ah, something happened. I think we broke the table. But like I told you, I'm in the studio, so the man with the horn busted the tape. That's what happened. There we go. Somebody's really on top. the wind. go to work every day. So I can't help you with that one. No, so beautiful. Wow. Hey, hey, hey. It's a weather station. Wow. I try to catch the moon. Where is he? I don't know. I think over there. Yeah, it is. We found it. Somewhere over there. So.
Mm. For those of you that just tuned in, we are at the Zugspitze, the highest mountain in Germany. We have a new friend in Westcliff, Colorado. He loves Ooh. mountains. So I hope this is high enough for you. In the name of the company operating the Tiroler Zugspitzbahn, in an altitude of 2,964 meters, on the western summit of the Zugspitze, situated in Austria. The eastern summit of this mountain is situated in Germany, and you will find there the so-called Golden Cross of the Zugspitze. This is Germany's highest mountain. Since you have come here by way of the Zugspitzbahn, we would like to give you some interesting information concerning this modern great capacity gondola lift, which specialists call construction of the century. It is constructed according to the double supporting cable system because it must resist wind of up to 250 kilometers per hour. Of course, the absolute technical security of the gondola lift at first priority. Also, comfort and speed also were important criteria when it was built to replace the former Zugspitz mountain railway constructed in 1926. The capacity is now three times as high as for the old railway, and the two gondolas offer place for 100 passengers each. With a speed of 10 meters per second, the difference of altitude of 1715 meters is overcome in 7.2 minutes. And now we would like to explain to you the wonderful panorama. To the south extends the so-called Schneeferner, an ideal skiing area, in an altitude of 2,850 to 2,000 meters, where you will find snow during spring. Almost 2,000 meters beneath the western wall of the Witterstein, on which you are now standing, there is the valley of the river Leusach, framed to the south by the mountains of the Nieminger Kette, with the Sonnenspitze, and to its west by the 1,210 meters high Fernpass. The road over this pass was already very much used in prehistoric times. At a location called Römerweg, forged iron ingots and a set of fibulas dating from the Latin period were mm. found. Around the year 40 or 50 AD, this was the Roman Via Claudia Augusta, which was extended during the 15th and 16th century so as to offer enough room for the trade traffic going to Augsburg in Germany. Bordering the valley, there are the touristic centers of Biberwehr, Leermoos and Erwald. To the northwest, in the direction of the Anna Mountains, you can see below the Lake Eibsee with its island, named after the Bavarian King Ludwig II. To the northeast, there is Garmisch-Partenkirchen with its mountain bank. To the north, the valley becomes larger and opens towards the spurs of the Bavarian Alps, with the lakes Ammersee and Starnberger Sea, both remains of the Ice Age. If you look towards the west and the south, you will see like an ocean of ice and snow-covered peaks. To the southwest, in a distance of 120 kilometers, you can see in Switzerland the 4,055 meters high Piz Bernina, and a little nearer the Sentis, 2,501 meters high, and framed by the Rhine that flows into the Lake Bodensee farther to the north. Before and already in Austria, there is the Silbretta group, ice covered and 3,300 meters high. To the south, you see the Fairweilgruppe and then the Ötztaler Alps with the 3,772 meters high Wildspitze. The Stubayer Alps with the Zuckerhütte, as well as the Zillertaler Alps with the Olbere, can only be seen from the terrace. There is a panoramic map to be found in the restaurant. We thank you for your attention and wish you a nice stay. Wonderful. That was nice of the lady Wonderful. to tell you that in English. Um, so down there is the Ipsy. Ipsy. I, I think 10 meters is 30 feet. And she Over said to there. go 30 feet per second. So you shouldn't eat lunch going up, I don't think. Over there. I 
can actually comprehend that, how, how fast you're going up that mountain. And over there is Switzerland. Wow, cool. It is beautiful. So pretty. Gosh. <laughs> Look at that, those mountains, huh? Mm. The air is so thin. Small village. I figured we need our hiking boots sooner or later. <laughs> Mountain is cold. <laughs> <laughs> I would think oh, this is great for winter sport. Those are the cables from the cable cars. <laughs> oh, there's one. That was a no brainer. Sounds like there's a lot of people there. Snowmobile. <laughs> that looks great. This is this time. It's time for me to come up to the <laughs> Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Doesn't look like anybody's working. That's the American camera we sent there. We sent home with her. It's doing a really good job. No lines on the bottom like we used to have. Mm. So you see now the gletscher. You know that icy stuff in the Alps? And it's gone very much. What, what you it's say? It's gone. But she's saying this is a glacier, that it's supposed to be a glacier. Good. And it's hardly wow. any, any snow there, it's all melted. A lot of global warming everywhere. Ooh. Yeah. Little church. Now on the other side, and that panorama, 
is so beautiful. I can't believe it. I got I get so many energy in my body. She got a charge. Yeah. A few clouds, and it's a little bit foggy. Yeah. So. Sun is so <laughs> wah. was not a word. I don't know Whoa. what that meant. I love it. That's what it meant, I guess. So. Inside the restaurant. Wow, that looks great. Cool. <laughs> the roof. She didn't show us any food. That's okay. We got spoiled. She's always shown us food. <laughs> cool. So. Doesn't look like lava rocks. Mm. It kind of interesting to know what so it is. I'm now in the mountain train. Drive down. And it was a long tunnel. The tunnel was about three, 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 three four kilometers. Three, four kilo, about yeah, between three or four kilometers. Yeah. So I think I go on the other side. So it's now green. Whoops. And I think I go down a little bit. So that is better. I think. Now, it's interesting about wow. that train. It has two tracks. Trees are over here. In the third track, in the middle. I love stone. And the train that comes down the mountain pulls oh. up the train going up. It's called a Zahnrad Bahn. I don't think there's a translation that a for that. And so they have to leave at the identical same time in order to accomplish that. Huh? So I would think they would even have to have equal amount of weight in the people. So that's energy efficient, I think. over there, let's going to be able to see that third track there. <laughs> How funny. How funny. If you don't have any pollution either. Now the window is dirty. Ah. It's damn still now.
Yeah, I think we can see that third oh. track here. Yeah. Maybe not. Oh. If you second, the other one comes, the train watch goes up. Don't scare it. But there you go, they're halfway <laughs> there. Move one. And here comes the next one. Wow. Yeah. Bayerisch Zugspitze. Yeah. You can see that third truck on there. Yeah. There's a lot of people. <laughs> so, we drive again. <laughs> and in a few seconds, you can see the Eibsee. Wow. Hey, see him. Oh, wow. Cool, and he's it's so blue. Very nice blue. And the Alps. And the trees. Oh. Another tunnel. So. downhill they're going faster got over that hump Now in Ipsy. Yeah, at least you're on the bottom. So I'm sitting in the car again and drive around. <laughs> and the sign said it goes to Oberhammergau and then out for Oberhammergau is where they have these uh, uh, like festivals when they reenact. Uh, the crucifixion and uh, in other plays, like they have outdoor, I think oh, it's called amphitheaters. This is the <laughs> This is Bolton. That is Colburn. The Colburn. Yeah. At least we made it off the mountain. It's windy. Windy on the bottom than it was on the top. In, in Switzerland, a lot of the towns are named above whatever and below whatever, so they have an over and an under and then the same name. So it would be over, over Amagau uh. and Unter Amagau. Two separate villages. Beautiful, huh? RVs. I bet you they are Mercedes. I had a moving truck one time made by Mercedes.
Christ, the music is very American. The houses are beautiful. Wow, very Don't know what he said. a song we recognize. I'm almost always amazed how clean everything always is. When we went to Colorado, we had a landlady that came from Poland and she swept all the leaves. And one day I wanted to, one had blown into the apartment I wanted to point it out to her. Yet she had forgotten one, but I didn't want to push my luck, so. But that's what that reminds me of. One leaf, and there she was with the broom. So. <laughs> Real impressive. Must be getting close to food time. They're thinking food. Yeah. Just patience, patience. I'm sure she'll take us to eat. Just wouldn't be fair to be gone all day with nothing to eat. I ate beef from Argentina because uh, the, the grain is different, so the beef is to our, uh, you know, what we used to, it's real tough. So I'm not crazy about those cows. Windshield is clean. Uh, speaking of food, there is a, uh, a little restaurant in, in um, I think it's in Spanaway or Parkland, and it's called the Euro Deli, um, Euro Deli. A Korean lady owns it, but she makes the best German food you've ever had. And uh, every once in a while, we take some of these European tapes over there, and so. Um, and, and then they play it while you, while you eat because a lot of Europeans come in there and swap stories about uh, when they were either stationed there or they lived there and things like that. And uh, oh, gee, all this has made me so hungry. So I'm hoping that we'll get to go somewhere. I think we'll go to the next clip and see if we get lucky and, um, and she decides to take us somewhere other than mountains and snow in Karlstad. Um, that we can't eat and uh, it's really amazing how she gets into crevices and how she does these things and I so appreciate her because those are the things I couldn't do for you. Uh, I don't mind driving but I'm not climbing and that's all I know about that. So when we're ready um, with the next clip I guess we can go to wherever she's gonna take us and um, I'm game. 
So I don't know about you, but I'm ready to go. Oh, here we are. Cool. This is actually a church. And uh, of course, she cannot talk while she's filming in the church. And she scans the ceilings and things so we can see the art uh, that was put there sometimes over four or five hundred years. And um, of course, some of these places got hit uh, by bombs. And in the meantime, they have been restored. They are not all Catholics. Um, most of Europe is set up as Catholic and Protestant, or what we call Lutheran here. And so a lot of money and a lot of gold and gemstone goes into these buildings. Um, it's set up somewhat different than here. There you pay a church tax and which affiliates you with either one religion or the other. So they do not separate church and uh, state. There's a truck out here, if that's what you hear that comes out of the studio. The steeples are so high at times that, uh, here again, we really appreciate that camera we sent with her because it gets so detailed. I believe this is a Catholic church. And I believe it's located um, either in or close to a monastery. I can't remember exactly. That would be one of the saints. And of course, these motifs are all over Europe. They are different time periods. And for those of you that uh, study art or understand that, I would think you could pretty much estimate at what time different things were brought into this particular church. And then speaking of war, you know, when we when we make war on people, not only the human life that is lost, the, uh, the art and the artifacts and all the wonderful things that the world has to offer. So praying for world peace is, is a good thing because there's so much more at stake than just control issues. Sounds like there's a lot of people there. And usually the organs are way up somewhere because of the acoustics. Imagine what it takes to maintain buildings like that. That must be part of the, uh, yeah, maybe that's the organ. They're called orgo, and they have air running through them. all the gold. In a lot of churches, their steeples are, the roofs are made out of gold. A lot of Russian Orthodox churches have gold uh, tops. Well, they are renovated the church. And they put that down, and when they are finished, they put it back up. Those are pieces they're working on. See? And here the river mine. A few people know that river. What? Frankfurt? Schaffenburg, and over here, near Coburg, Staffelstein. Und jetzt gehen wir eine Panzerbierhaxe essen. Hey, ne? yeah, we're going to eat now. 
Panzer Bier Haxen. I think that tastes very good. I will, I will show you later a picture of it, okay? Good, because I can't even say it. That is a monk. Is it in a monastery? Monk of Bier. That means they have fossils in it. And I have a surprise for you. This is Oriental. But there's the pyramid. They're confused. And here comes my surprise. Here is a mumia. That's a mummy. And an uh, Englishman took that mummia from Egypt over here. Came from Egypt? Germany. Ugh. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm sorry, it was a German man, Herzog Max. And so 1838. 1880, uh, 1838, yeah. That I don't understand. He took that mummy over here. So, what is that? I go on the other side. I think what you said, a German brought the mummy from Egypt. Or, he could be the German. I don't know. I couldn't understand that part. A few pictures. This is a travel route. And that is a travel route from Heads of Max from Bavaria. So he must have went to Egypt and brought the money back. And those now we got are it. from Egypt. Seems like every country has Egyptian artifacts. Surprising they have any luck. like two different languages. One was Arabic, I don't Those know what are one was. closest from the Orient. <laughs> there she is. In the reflection. Jeez. Here's a big one. 
they say that those crocodiles came out of that area. So. These are skulls. Those are uh, head, heads, yeah? Skulls. Ooh. More crocodile and pieces. Man, we are so young. All the stuff when the people dies and put it in the car. You know, when they go under the earth. She said these are things that were buried with the people. And man is so young. And, uh, but we have all the answers. Mm -hmm. You go to places like that, you pick up energies and makes you think how nothing's really changed. We're still trying to survive and beautify our life as much as we can. So hopefully we will leave artifacts that a um, thousand years from now people can understand why we did what we did and learn from them. And maybe it's a repeat and we haven't learned anything. It's a fish saurier. Like a dinosaur, but it's a fish saurier. And here comes. Yeah, big headed fish. That must be the bones on that fish. Yeah, big fish, because there are big bones. You know, uh, it takes a lot of planning, I would think, to go to these places. Uh, the long drive there, and the um, uh, sometimes they have to spend the night. It's like when they went to the Zugspitze, of course, they had to spend the night. And the first part of that is uh, upcoming on, on a different program. And so we really appreciate uh, what she's doing, uh, because some of us couldn't uh, get there at all. and. Um, uh, she's going to be in the studio in, I think, a week from, I think, in two weeks. And one of, these are some things we want to ask her about how she likes being, uh, you know, our reporter and everything. And again, I'd like to encourage you, if you go somewhere, um, even if you don't take a video camera, I would prefer video, but we can take um, a still photos and put them into collage or something uh, because from what I understand, some of the friends really, really enjoy these travel shows. There's a man in Olympia, his name is Lauren, and he really enjoys going places with us. And, and as you know, um, uh, in, in 2004, we went lots of places, and uh, we brought in some experts, not a lot of them this year, but uh, it seems that real life effect where we just take you along and get our boots dirty and all of that uh, seems to be uh, one of your favorites. And I told you wrong the first time. Uh, when we first started out, I told you Claudia would be here next week. Uh, it's actually in two weeks. Next week, we're going to um, Toledo, Washington, because of the interest in Mount St. Helens uh, since our mountain has started to um, act up again. And boy, there's a man coming my way. How exciting. I mean, he's just zeroing right in on me. How exciting. Um, I thank all the viewers for giving me feedback. And, uh, and I do have to tell you, when we aired Dachau, uh, when we took it to the concentration camp, I had 18 calls during the show. 
and to all the friends that called, um, I really appreciated your um, support on that. We did go out on the limb a little bit, and so we do appreciate you letting us know what you think. And uh, I guess in a in about a month we're gonna go on the limb again. So it just kind of cheered me on a little bit too, because sometimes. We really don't know which way to go and go. Speaking of going, I hear music. we we'll see you next week in Toledo, Washington. Um, come see us again. I'm tired and my shoes are dirty. You see? Yeah.